around, you know, after the revolution, not worth a continental. A lot of people don't know that, you know, we experimented with paper money before the founding fathers put us on the gold standard. And the reason they said not worth a continental is because continental currency, which was not backed by gold and silver, collapsed. And people eventually lost about 90 percent of their value in, in, the, in the continentals. And so the founding fathers had a bad taste in their mouth from paper money. And, you know, as bad as paper money is, you know, it, it's better to at least have cash than the computer entries that the government wants us to have, because then they can track our every movement. Then it makes it easier for them to control the economy if they know every dime that you have and every place that you spend it. At least once you have their cash, it's kind of an anonymous transaction. Sure, it's designed to want. knock out underground economies that are key during tyranny. Yeah. And, and so, you know, that's what look, I tell people, look, you know, forget about even keep gold and silver, you know, instead of instead of then they're not going to be able to do anything about that. You know, and the price is ultimately going to go a lot higher. But look, the dollar has risen recently because everybody believes that the economy is sound and we're going to raise rates. They haven't figured out reality yet. They never do. They never see these bubbles until after they pass, they, after they pop. Uh, but the dollar is going to go down substantially. In fact, it peaked. If you go back to March, that was the low for the euro. So the dollar has actually been falling against the beleaguered euro ever since March. So the dollar is still rising, though, against some emerging market currencies sure. and some commodity-based currencies. But sure. this, I believe, is the dollar's last stand. It is going to turn as people realize that we're not going to get the right hikes, that we're going to get uh, more quantitative easing. And then if China selling its treasuries, is this just the beginning of a snowball that's going to get bigger and bigger? Because once China starts selling, what do you do if you're another country and you own U.S. treasuries and you know China's selling? Sure. You want to get out quick. You don't want to wait till China's finished selling. So I'm not wrong. This, this is a big, big deal that China's starting to dump treasuries. Yeah, and people are dismissing this. People are laughing. Oh, you see, China's selling their treasuries and it's no big deal. It is premature to say it's no big deal. It just started. And look, if China's not going to be buying our treasuries, if they're going to be selling our treasuries, who is going to step up to the plate? Who is going to take over for China? Can anybody figure that out? Now, obviously, behind all of this is the fact there is a global slowdown. Uh, how bad do you think the slowdown is going to get? We've got Africa and the Middle East just emptying out into Europe. It is getting crazy. How does that compound the situation? Well, I think the slowdown is being compounded by the belief that the Fed is going to be tightening monetary policy after seven years of zero. This impacts the entire world because the dollar is the reserve currency. But I think people are preparing for a tightening cycle that's not going to take place. All those capitalists being sucked out of the emerging economies and out of commodities uh, that's moving into the U.S. financial markets because it's ready for uh, you know higher interest rates, that's slowing down the global economy. When people realize that that's a mistake and the dollar starts to tank and commodity prices start to go back up and money is repatriated back to the countries that it left, uh, you know, chasing dollars, that is going to be a relief for the global economy. But there are certainly parts of the world, parts of Europe, Japan, the United States that have too much government, too much regulation, too much money printing, too much interference. These countries are never going to truly recover. Let's talk so about it. We got to go to break. Peter Schiff, stay there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, bottom line, now is the time to start getting prepared psychologically, financially, physically, because the world is going into a depression. And if it's anything like the Great Depression, it will be spectacular because the public is so, on average, unprepared to take care of themselves. I mean, back in the 30s, you could work on your own car. Most people had their own gardens. I'm not going to belabor that point. People know that. This goes from bad to worse, and I want to ask Peter Schiff how bad he thinks it could really get here in a moment, where he thinks the third world is going, uh, what he predicts the Fed will do, because uh, they are now hinting, saying they may not raise rates, or it may be a tiny raise, or they may go down. And Larry Summers is running around saying that's the answer and criticizing Yellen. Uh, so they want to have their cake and eat it, too, have people believe that interest rates are going up and, and i guess in the real world for us they have some but not for the establishment they want to have their cake and eat it too the toll-free number to join us your questions for peter schiff and of course myself alex jones are 800
259 800-259-9231 for this Friday Worldwide Edition. And I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, with the abbreviated two-hour transmission live as well. And, of course, the nightly news tonight at PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. The daytime radio show slash TV show has a free feed at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Please spread that around to friends and family. We have the free podcast, Droid, and iPhone apps, uh, and much more right there at InfoWars.com forward slash show. And, of course, then if you subscribe for five ninety five a month, 20 people can use your membership and log in and watch the nightly news every night, uh, tape to air, sometimes live, sometimes five hours long, always an hour long at PrisonPlanet.tv. So I want to thank all the members of PrisonPlanet.tv. You make so much of what we're doing possible. Uh, also, uh, we're going to end this special today because supplies are so limited. I don't want to sell out. It'll go back to the regular price this weekend. That's still very affordable for some of the most high-quality, low-priced uh, colloidal silver out there. An amazing uh, alternative to antibiotics, in my opinion. My view, it's what I use it for. Uh, topically, uh, you name it. Uh, it's It's been known for thousands of years, and uh, the scientists and doctors we've had on believe 30 parts per million is the best. Any uh, more than that, it's just too small and becomes toxic, ladies and gentlemen. And, and that's our view. Talk to your physician, do your own research. 30% off a single bottle, 50% off when you get two bottles. Basically, you get two bottles, you get two free, to be technical. So 30% off one bottle or buy two, get two free, InfoWarsLife.com. And we do have our amazing medical-grade methylcobalamin, vitamin B12. That's true, organic Vitamin B12, you will not find it basically anywhere, especially in this dose. This is the same stuff that I went to a medical doctor to get, because I wanted to experience that, injectable into the fat. Same color, same stuff, same thing. This is a pharmaceutical grade when you take under your tongue. You do not inject it. Uh, and it is simply amazing. The natural clean energy you get from it, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And when you purchase the products at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com, for that matter, the water filtration, the non-GMO seeds, the shortwave radios, the high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply, a portion of that, again, goes to fund this operation. Even when we drop ship stuff like the water filters or the high-quality storable foods, you're directly helping fund InfoWars and the entire operation that's reaching people exponentially. So thank you so much for supporting the operation. But you are getting high-quality products that we've vetted, that we've researched at the very lowest prices that we can competitively put them out. I mean, I have to sign special contracts to be able to give 10% off the ProPure water filters that cut out the glyphosates, the fluoride, and the rest of it because we do sell it at the lowest price because we are the biggest distributor in the world of a major company. Because... When I started promoting them three years ago, four years ago, I said I'm not going to carry it unless I get lower prices than basically anybody else. That's just a free market tactic. And I went out and researched filters, and, and because I'd had a few other companies, and they just weren't as good as they used to be, So, I, in my view, my opinion. And I went and saw the side-by-side -side studies on ProPure, G2, and other systems they sell, and it's just the best for the price. InfoWarsStore.com or 888-888. Two five three three one three nine. Okay, going back to our guest Peter Schiff. Uh, you can read all of his uh, analysis and more at Europac.com. Uh, he joins us. How concerned should I be? Obviously, things are unraveling quickly. A recession here is just painful. But when you see what's happening over in the Middle East, Africa, areas of Asia, Latin America. Seems like the whole world's imploding, but meanwhile they go on the news and make fun of you and others and say there's no problem anywhere, everything's fine. What's the reality? Well, there are problems everywhere, but unfortunately a lot of those problems emanate from here. The problem is that the dollar is acting as the reserve currency for the world and it's poisoning the monetary systems around the world because the dollar cannot be the reserve currency. It could initially, when America was the world's largest you know, creditor, 
when we were exporting manufactured goods around the world, when we were loaning money to everybody because we had enormous surpluses, we had small government, we had productive people, we had a free market economy, we were on the gold standard. You know, that was fine back then. But America has nothing in common with its former self. You know, we're you know, we're a basket case now. We have well, all these debts, all these taxes and regulations. We're not on a gold standard. The dollar can't act as a reserve currency. And so that system has to come to an end. And I think what we're seeing now, we're witnessing the death throes of that system as the world is going to ultimately be moving away. And I think China, you know, moving to allow its currency to trade more freely, starting to sell off its huge cachet of U.S. treasuries is a big step, a first step in that direction. And at the end, it's going to be very painful for Americans. And if you think this recovery was bad, wait till you see how bad the next recession is going to be. Peter Schiff is our guest. Uh, I've been asking a lot of the questions here, and I want to go to some phone calls so they can ask questions. But what else are you looking at? What else uh, is on your front burner right now? Well, I, I think it's right now it's what's going to happen with uh, the monetary policy and are people going to final figure out what I've been saying, that the Fed's been bluffing. And even if the Fed ultimately says it's not going to raise rates, they're not going to admit that they never intended to. People have to figure that out. People have to connect these dots. And, you know, they're actually pretty easy to connect if you bother to look at it. And so I just look at this window of opportunity here for my clients and for prospective clients to get out now, right, to get out of Dodge before the shooting really starts, getting rid of dollars and buying these foreign assets and taking advantage of other people's ignorance uh, of what's really going on uh, to buy the things that they're selling. What's the next shoe to drop? Because you were on a few months ago. You're on, of course, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. But I mean, you've been coming on four or five times a year forever. Now just intensifying because things are building towards the head. But if we, I mean, if we go back to just a month ago, two months ago, you basically called what we now see happening. Um, people like uh, Harry Dent has called it accurately in many ways, but he thought gold would be going down more by now. You've been proven correct. It's gone up some. He thinks... Uh, in the next, you know, six months or so, it'll start going down. Uh, but overall, you've been pretty much dead on. What factors are you looking at now that signal how fast this this bubble uh, collapse could go? I mean, are we oh. just seeing the beginnings of the end of the dollar, or does it take a month, six months, five years? Well, what's happened more recently since the last time I was on your show is we've decisively broken the uptrend in the U.S. stock market that began on the lows back in 2009. And we've had a bounce back in the last few days. You know, we had the biggest drop point wise ever in several days and the biggest rally. But that rally didn't change the technical damage that was done in the sell off. So I think we've broken uh, that bull and this market is in correction. It's going to continue to correct. It's probably going to go into a bear market unless the Fed can rescue it, unless the Fed throws it the life preserver that it needs, which is no rate hikes in QE instead of dangling an anchor in front of it in the form of suggesting that maybe rates are going to go higher. And even though the Dow itself is in correction territory, uh, there's about a third of the S&P 500 that's already in a bear market. These stocks have already dropped by 20 percent or more, but this is being masked by the averages. And the averages, of course, are going to be influenced by some of these high profile names that in many cases are extremely overvalued and vulnerable to big declines if the Fed were to actually follow through with its threats to raise interest rates. So this decline in the stock market, of course, is putting added pressure on the Fed because they worked so hard to inflate this bubble, and now they're watching the air come out, and they haven't even pricked it yet. So I think they're going to try to stop uh, the air from coming out and blow more back in uh, by softening uh, their talk about rate hikes and then ultimately coming clean about the fact that we're going to get another uh, injection of quantitative easing. And I think this next round is going to be the fatal dose. It's going to be bigger than what, you know, one, two and three combined. And you can't wait for the Fed to announce that uh, to make your investments, because by then it's going to be a stampede to get out of the dollar and you want to get out before the crowd. I tell you, uh, the fundamentals of the economy are not in good shape. I don't have to be a rocket scientist or an economist to see that. 
that I just don't think the public is ready for the type of downturn we're obviously going to be seeing here in the next few months, the next few years. What do you expect?